then of course on the vocals out front steering the ship through the night okay you got doug Gray, and uh doug sang with toy and george and uh, ringos he says uh in different versions of the band when they was probably still in high school i've seen pictures and all they they kind of had a you know loose group of people they played with and uh but that was kind of natural for them to uh play together to the toy factory it was called before marshall tucker which i thought was a great name really but and uh yeah, they've been playing together, and then they all went to Vietnam, you know, within 69, 70, 71, all separately. And uh, I know they played some recordings of them talking about, well, we'll do some groovy stuff, man, when we get back. And boy, they did. They sure did. And, uh, man, they just put things back together and come down here to make it and, and stepped on some fire, man. Hey, y'all, this is Chris Hicks, and welcome to the Southern Rock Insider. If you like what you see, please hit subscribe and click the notification bell. It's time to rock Southern style. The Southern Rock Insider. When the grass grows over me, won't you let me know that you still love me? Never put nobody else above me while I'm gone. My love for you is so strong Marshall Tucker Band. Yeah, when I was playing with the Outlaws, we used to play with them a lot. And more times than not, we would join them for Can't You See at the end of the night. And uh, that got to be kind of an every, every night thing and got to know the guys real good and everything. And uh, so um, Stuart had to have hand surgery. And they called me and said, can you fill in for Stuart with us for two weeks? I said, sure. And uh, what's funny of that is, is I already had a show booked opening up for Marshall Tucker in Florida during the two weeks that they asked me to fill in. So my guys met me in Florida and we played that show. So the two weeks ended up being a year. And I didn't know why. I hadn't really talked with Stuart much. I didn't know him that well at the time. And uh, I just kind of assimilated into the band. We, we played most of that year and everything. And, and the year's up. And uh, I did talk with Stuby and uh, he, he seemed like he wasn't coming back. And so I said, man, I don't want to stay if you're not coming back. And so I, I left and and, uh, and he came back for a year. And he calls me up and says, uh, Hey, why don't you come back and uh, and let's play together and and uh, we'll get rid of the other guy. And I said sure. And so I did. I come back and, and played with the band and, and uh, that's, that's when I joined up and when we started trying to get interest in making a new Marshall Tucker record, which we call Beyond the Horizon. We're playing out there on the road, you know, 150 dates or so a year, and uh, on these dates, Doug would say a lot of times, "We're working on a new album. It's called Beyond the Horizon." which was, I'm not saying it's untrue, I'm just saying that it was false. <laughs> we didn't have anything going at the time, and Clay's in the band, and so, uh, you know, kind of maybe looking to do another record, although that hadn't been the title. So um, Clay comes down to my house, and we write a couple of songs to kind of get started, and I said, why don't we write one called Beyond the Horizon and just make it kind of, you know, come true, and so that's what we did. We uh, got a map out and, you know, uh, picked a few places out in the desert and, and wrote a song called Beyond the Horizon, and started writing to, for songs to, for that whole album. And uh, some, uh, I wrote a couple of songs for the album and some of my songs got retooled on that album as well. And uh, there was the first Marshall Tucker Band original album in quite a few years. I remember Shout Factory put it out. I can't remember how many years at the time, but uh, Ride of Your Life. <laughs> You know, just kind of a little Tucker feel, sort of flute and guitar doing a line, um, sort of just trying to, you know, uh, go with the the menu of the the I want to say going with the uh, same ingredients as the original band without kind of copying them too much, just trying to get the flavor of it in there. But I do remember seeing the Don Kirshner rock concert. Now, I don't know if that was in '73. I saw it, but I guess so if it was on TV. So, and uh, I remember thinking, wow, you know, uh, Tori especially just that tone he had. And if you look on the videotape, they're playing through four twins, <laughs> two little stacked on top of two. And that's not two spares. That's that's four going wide open. And uh, boy, it sounds great though. It really does. And just the, the band, the ensemble sound that they had was, was really great. And what good timing for them. The commercial for Brothers and Sisters comes out and here's a new band for you. And boom, uh, it kind of all goes from there. And I saw the Marshall Tucker Band live in the Macon Coliseum 
I think it was 1979. I'm not sure about that, but what I remember about it is uh, sitting in the uh, way out from it, and I remember it was a lot of, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> Phil Maurice type stuff going on where they break it down and just toy played guitar and spotlight on him only. And I also remember smoking marijuana with total strangers, just passing it along down the line, you know. Don't hate me for that, okay? And, uh, but, you know, I, I'm serious. It was kind of a communal feeling back in those days, and it didn't hurt nobody's feelings, you know? But, yeah, they were great. They, were, uh, they sounded, that side of them, they sounded kind of like the Allman Brothers. They were real strong on it that night. And uh, I saw them <clears throat> three or four more times, I guess, the original format of the band. Clay Cook came in the band. Doug had played me uh, some stuff of his when he was still in college. So listen to my nephew. And uh, I remember hearing him sing then and played like some jazz guitar. I was like, wow, man, this cat's good. So I met him a few times. And, but uh, uh, when I was out of the band for a few years, I'm playing in Panama City and Marshall Tucker's playing that night. And it's funny, the club owner I was playing for, they're such a big Tucker fan. We would get late getting there. They didn't even want us to play. They didn't want to go to the concert. So that's what we did. And I get up and jam with them and stuff, and, and Clay's in the band. And I realized that's Doug's nephew. And uh, so within a year or so, I was, I was back in the band, and Clay and I got to be buddies. And uh, man, what a powerhouse, a talented multi-instrumentalist. I've never seen anybody pick up stuff the way I've seen him just kind of naturally, from engineering to playing to writing, he just eat up with it, man. Just really naturally talented, although he's worked hard at it too. And, uh, a real straight up guy. I called him CC Ryder, Clay Cook. See what you had done. And uh, yeah, it was great, man. Uh, him, you know, I, I never noticed it until Big Dave said something to me about it. He looks like Toy, he says to me. I said, no, nah, he didn't like Toy. No, I looked at him more. You know, he really kind of does, you know. Um, but man, he, he, he was a great player. He had a good time playing uh, steel guitar on a few songs and, and he played piano on songs. You know, he played flute one time when we didn't have a flute guy for a couple months, he filled in there. He filled in playing drums for my band one night, you know, and, and uh, yeah, he's just an all around uh, musical kind of dude, man. He really is. Uh, I told him way back then, I said, we're all going to be working for you one day. Okay. I know that already. And, uh, yeah, he's, he's great, man. He's a real good producer for other people too. He works really good with other artists, I think, a uh, completely different way than when he's working himself. You know, he's a real pro, but you know, a good producer has got to know how to kind of reach there and get something out of you or, make you do something you wouldn't think of doing, and he's good at that, he sure is. He got a lot of deal of respect for Clay Cook. Yeah, they were college, Clay and John were college roommates, and uh, they had a project called the Lo-Fi Masters. And uh, that song, that big hit song, the first one, he played the demo of them doing that, and wrote some great songs together. Some of the songs on the John Mayer record, or, or the Clay Cook, John Mayer compositions. And uh, you can almost tell the chord changes in there. They could have their own style, man. It was something really fresh at the time and really good still now. And, you know, Clay was giving me uh, kind of day by day when John was signing his record deal and all that. And they were still in the van out playing, but people were just eating up that, that record, you know. Young girls screaming and the whole thing, the excitement of it. And, and uh, we, we watched him climb right up in there and he and fell right in. It couldn't happen to a better singer or player, too. I thought he was one of the best to come around in a long time. When we were on the Skinner cruise, I think it was, Clay says to me, uh, come down on the deck of whatever at a certain time, I'm going to sit in with this band, check them out. I said, okay. So I go listen to him in uh, Zach Brown band, see who they were. And there was a promo pack on every doorknob on that whole cruise that had a Zach Brown band thing. And the interesting thing, I thought they sounded kind of like widespread panic that night, more so than the country band we knew a year, two years later. So I saw them again, they come to make it. And uh, I went to the Capitol. So I mean, they, they sounded good. They sounded a little bit more like widespread panic, I think, than they do now. I don't, I don't know, this is my opinion. And then uh, Clay joins them and boom, chicken fried, you know, and pow, you know, they're off and running. And uh, the Buffett connection, I, I didn't see that at first, you know, but he, he does kind of have that feel to him too. John, uh, Zach Brown does. And uh, we did a show with him over there to the Carolina, the Southern Grounds thing. And uh, Clay, of course, come and sat in with us and they had me and Doug come up and sit and do Midnight Promises with them. And, uh, Bunch of good guys, man. Bunch of talented musicians over there. They're doing the Queen song as we're walking over there to see me. They play all kind of crazy stuff live just to show their musicianship, I think. But yeah, man, great songwriters and, and world-class musicians those guys are. David Muse from Firefall played with us for 20, some, 20 plus years. Um, a great flute sax piano player, musician. Uh, just wonderful, man. David is, is eat up with it, man. He, he uh, is one of the best in the business. He really is. And uh, he's also a reader guy. You know, he can read the music. 
uh, not long ago they were doing a firefall and uh who's the guy you the cat al stewart so he plays that sax solo he said i was lazy i read it it's that's just still blows my mind you know you're lazy so you just look there and boom you know he's just one of those guys but he can play by ear as well as he can play uh with the music on the on the marshall tucker album i'm not sure which one it's on but i have a song called give it all you got it might be on beyond the horizon and uh the way the process of working in Carolina, we cut the basic tracks, and then I'll come down to making with the masters and the Pauls, and we put on these piano and organ tracks. And in this particular case, I take the masters down to Florida to Dave's house, and and we put on start putting on his parts. But I didn't stay for the whole thing for the horns, all the horn section. Also, I wanted to sound like the Memphis horns right here, or the Muffin Shoals horns, and it really does. And it's all him doing horn parts in his little home studio, and he did a great job. The flute parts too, and some of that man, just really good stuff. And he he would uh, stack the tracks for me. And uh, Dave's is, is doing well. He's a cancer survivor now. He's coming back strong. And he's a great player. Well, another guy with Marshall Tucker that is very noteworthy is Ronald Radford. Ronald D. Radford, a chicken picker. Man, he's just like assassinates the guitar. Ronald, I love your tone, man. That cutting telecaster tone. He's the best, man. He really is. Ronald D. Radford. He played with uh, Tra Randy Travis, I think, in his earlier years. And. Uh, a few other people too. We played with Marshall Tucker for a few years. Great player. The, the Marshall Tucker band, Barry Boom Boom Borden, the drummer. We calculated it last week. We've been playing together for 32 years. And that means the year I joined the Outlaws, I consider that us playing together. From that point on, he plays on my first solo album, Funky Broadway, it's BB on every cut. Plus he played live dates with me in between our Outlaw gigs. And, uh, and so Huey joined Skinner, and uh, BB's playing with Tommy Strain up in Atlanta for a year or so. I joined Tucker, they needed a drummer. Well, guess what? You know, and he's right in there, and uh, we've been running hard ever since, man. I've never played with anybody that long, and he hasn't either. But uh, I still think of him as Mother's Finest Drummer for some reason because that band was so good. And the BB's version of that is we just never had any good songs. Yeah, right. But great band, and I love him like a brother, Barry Boom Boom Borden, and the 32 years strong brother. In the Marshall Tucker Band these days, we got a great band. Uh, Rick Mad Dog Willis from Spartanburg, South Carolina, is our other guitar player. Rick uh, plays Les Paul like I do. We switch off a lot of parts, um, share some of the toys' parts, share. We have a good time playing together. And uh, Marcus James Henderson took the spot of flute, sax, keyboards, vocals. And Marcus is, is just a powerhouse of a, of a performer and a musician all together who comes from a band called King Johnson that he had for many years. Great band, just a wonderful band that has a reunion about once a year up in Atlanta. They were really some kind of in the little feet vein, I guess you'd say, but a little more New orleans -y, a little more original or something. They were great, man. And uh, uh, they were kind of starting to possibly break up. You know, I used to go see them play a lot and got to know Marcus pretty well. So. Uh, Dave was, was getting to be where he was having, gonna have to leave the band. And I said, but hey guys, when, when we have to do that, I got the guy, you know, I really got the guy. And they come and say, you got the guy? I said, I got the guy. And we still got the guy. And they, they come in and knocked it out. He sure did. The current bass player is Ryan Ware. Rhinoceros, I call him, Rhino. Rhino's dad is Stunk, who's the original road crew guy with Tucker. And uh, uh, still a family member and everything. And, uh, and Ryan has played with uh, Carlene Carter, I mean, Dana Carter, excuse me. He's played with a bunch of Nashville acts. He moved up there and became a bass player quite a few years ago. He played with Toy, too, back in uh, a couple of years before he died. He was playing bass with Toy, and uh, he's a great, great bass player. He really is. He, he's got Tommy's bass that, that was given to him shortly after Tommy died, and uh, Tommy's rig that he plays through. And he really goes the extra mile to play those parts, very authentic. And uh, it's, it's been a refreshing change for us because Tommy Caldwell's bass drove that band. It was, you know, the cement to it all. So it's been great having Ryan with us. It really has. And then, of course, on the vocals out front, steering the ship through the night, okay, you got Doug Gray. And uh, Doug sang with Toy and George and uh, Ringo, as he says, uh, in different versions of the band when they was probably still in high school. I've seen pictures and all. They, they kind of had a, you know, loose group of people they played with. And, uh, but that was kind of natural for them to uh, play together. To the Toy Factory, it was called, before Marshall Tucker, which I thought was a great name, really. But and, uh, Yeah, they've been playing together, and then they all went to Vietnam, you know, within 69, 70, 71, all separately. 
And uh, I know they played some recordings of them talking about, well, we'll do some groovy stuff, man, when we get back. And boy, they did. They sure did. And uh, man, they just put things back together and come down here to Macon and, and stepped on some fire, man. And Doug still uh, remembers things like his mind's like a steel trap sometimes. You know, I, I, I think that uh, I get my memory gets a little bad from time to time, but he, rem he remembers a lot of things from the old days very sharply. And, uh, yeah. So if you want to come out and see a band from time to time, come out and see the Marshall Tucker Band. Can't you see? Can't you see? What that woman know she been doing to me? Thanks for watching this episode of Southern Rock Insider. Please hit subscribe and click the notification bell so you won't miss a single episode. If you have any questions or comments or suggestions for future episodes, please respond below or you can email us at southernrockinsider at gmail.com. This is your Southern Rock Insider, Chris Hicks, and thanks again for watching. The Southern Rock Insider.